Hey everyone, I'm Caleb, and I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step creating a new project in Filmora 9. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to create a project and change your project settings. As soon as you open up Filmora, you're going to see this window here. On the right side, you can open up recent projects and quickly get to work. On the left, you can open a project you already have or start a new one. In this drop-down menu, you can pick your aspect ratio for your project. As default, it's set to 16 by 9 because that's a very common aspect ratio for films. But not everyone that edits wants to use this aspect ratio. So we have a few other options here, along with 1 by 1 for an Instagram post, 9 by 16 for an Instagram story or any other vertical video, and there's also two other common options here, 4 by 3 and 21 by 9. If you have a different aspect ratio in mind, you can change it once we get inside the project. A tip for me would be to leave it as 16 by 9 for now if you don't know what your aspect ratio is. So if we click New Project, we're inside Filmora 9 looking at our new project. Filmora 9 is not going to name your project until you import some media into it. So if you saw our tutorial on the interface of Filmora, you can easily find where to import some media at this big window here. We're going to click on that and find a clip to add to our project. I'll go more in depth with importing in another tutorial. For now, we only need one clip. After we have media in our project, we can go to the top left corner where it says File and click Save Project As, and go ahead and name the project and save it where you want to keep it. After that, we can go up to File again and go to our project settings. Here we can change the aspect ratio to something custom by going into this drop down menu. We can change the resolution with this drop down menu, and we can choose whatever resolution we want for our project. 1920 by 1080 is a standard for YouTube, television, and even movies. Most cameras these days record in this resolution. Even your smartphone most likely defaults to capturing video in 1920 by 1080, so this is usually a good choice. If you have a camera that shoots 4K, then you can select that as well. This will be a much bigger file for your computer to handle, and most people don't have a 4K display to view the video on. If you want to put the video online, however, or want to give your computer an easier time exporting, you can use 1280 by 720 This resolution still looks pretty good and will save you time while exporting and uploading. Under that, we choose the frame rate of our video. Most smartphones record at 30 frames per second. However, the standard for filmmaking is usually 23.978. The frame rate you want might take a little bit of research, but it's important to find out what frame rate you shot your footage in. Don't worry about it if you don't know what the settings of your video should be. When you first drop a clip into your timeline, Filmora 9 will ask you if you want to change the project settings to match with the clip you dragged in, and I'll show you that now. As you can see, by dragging the clip down to the timeline, it opened this window here. I can choose to change it, leave it, or click this check here if I don't want the program to ask anymore. One thing you want to do every time before you leave the program is make sure you save your project again. You can do that by using Control s on Windows or Command s on Mac to quickly save the project. Alternatively, you can go up to the file menu at the top left. And last but not least, there's also a little button at the top right corner, and it lets you save your project wherever you want, as well as change the name, if you haven't already named the project. Thanks for watching! Check out our other tutorials to learn how to edit a video from start to finish on Filmora 9. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to import media, as well as add media to the timeline, organize media, and use the instant cutter. To start, let's click on the window that says Import Media Files here. Here we can navigate and find the media that we want to work with if it's located somewhere on our computer. I'll grab some stock footage here to import. There's plenty more ways to import in Filmora 9. You can visit the Import drop-down menu to import media if it's located on a phone, camera, or on social media. You can also import a whole folder here if you have all your media located in a folder. You can also drag media from your computer to the media window. Another thing located in this menu is the Instant Cutter. This is a super fast way to do a rough cut of a video that doesn't need much editing and can render instantly. Whereas normally it takes a while to render a video, 
the Instant Cutter is literally instant. By selecting Import with Instant Cutter tool, we can open up the Instant Cutter. Near the top left corner is a button that says Open File. Here we can navigate to any MP4 clip on our computer and import into the Instant Cutter. Moving to the right part of the window, there's a timeline as well as a display to see your footage. If I grab the orange playhead here, I can scrub through my clip. If you want to trim off the start or end of your video, it's easily done by click grabbing one of the light blue handles on the timeline here and dragging it to shorten the clip. In the merge section of the instant cutter, you can quickly put clips together in a new video by importing some and then arranging the order you want the clips to be in. The clip at the top will play first, and the clip on the bottom will be last. By clicking and dragging the clip by this icon here, you can choose the order that your clips appear when they are merged together. You can click the blue export button at the bottom right corner of the window to export the clip. Here it will let you choose where you put your finished clip. You can also visit the when done menu to open the folder or to have your clip be imported into Filmora if you want to keep editing it. So those are a few ways to import media. By right clicking in the big gray box here, you can import more media. So I'm going to do that now so we can organize the clips. I'm going to just select all my clips and click open. By clicking the little squares up next to the search bar, we can choose how to sort files, how to group them, and choose how we see the clips. By clicking on list view, we can see our media reorganized here, as well as all of the information for our clips displayed. Beside that icon, we can filter our media area to only show us what we want displayed. By clicking this icon here, we can create a folder, and right beside that, we can delete a folder. Folders are a nice way to organize your media. For example, you can keep all your B-roll in one folder and your best shots in another, to keep it organized. By right-clicking the folder, you can change the name. There you have it! Everything you need to know about importing media. Thanks for watching! Check out our other tutorials to learn how to edit a video from start to finish on Filmora 9. Hey everyone! I'm Caleb, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through some editing basics in Filmora 9. In this video, you will learn how to add media to your timeline, how to move clips around on the timeline, how to split and delete clips, and how to change clip duration. Here's an example of a simple cut or edit in a video. If we have clips in the media library up here, we can click the green plus symbol to add the clip in where your playhead is. You can also drag the clip from the media library to the timeline wherever you want it. The window that comes up will let you match your project settings with your media. You can click the check mark right here if you want the program to leave your settings as they are and stop asking you. If you're dropping an image into your timeline, you might not want to match the settings because the picture might not be the same settings as your video. Or maybe you're adding some slow motion footage shot at a separate frame rate. In that case, you don't want to match the settings to footage that isn't meant for slow motion. It's a good idea to verify your project settings before you start editing to avoid any issues. In this example clip, I want to cut out the camera movement so that we go right from the window to the clock. I'm going to move the playhead to the end of the window section and click the scissor icon to create a cut. I can also use the shortcut Control b on Windows or Command b on Mac. I'll be sure to go through the other features of the timeline in the timeline tutorial. After that, I'll move to the start of when we see the clock and click the scissors again. Now I'll click on the middle section to select it and click the trash can icon to delete the center clip. You can also press delete on your keyboard to delete the clip. Now there's a big gap in between the two clips. You can close the gap by clicking and dragging the clip on the right to meet the clip on the left, like this. Let's say you want a little list of the window at the start. Let's just grab the left side of the clip and drag it to make it shorter. It's also going to tell you how much time you're taking off the clip where it says reduced. If you want a specific duration, just right click the clip and select speed and duration. 
you can change the duration and speed of a clip here, as well as play a clip in reverse by clicking reverse speed. There's another way to do this type of editing that lots of people use, and that would be using in and out points. Let's head to the clip again, but this time I'll double click it, not on the plus button. This video will show up on the right side of the screen here. If I click the I key, this will set an in point. If I click the O key, this will set an out point. You can also use the mark in and mark out buttons located right here. Then, we drag the clip from the media area to the timeline, and it'll be cut just how we want it. We can now do the same thing with the other part of the clip, and put them together on the timeline. You can put two clips together on your timeline by dragging each clip from the media area to the timeline and placing them in the order you want them. And there you have it! You can now cut out unwanted sections of a clip, change clip duration, and edit some clips together. Thanks for watching! Check out our other tutorials to learn how to edit a video from start to finish on Filmora 9. In today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to export your video in different formats, as well as how to upload straight to YouTube or Vimeo, and how to burn the video to a DVD. Exporting is the final step in editing a video. If you get through the process of editing your whole video, then you want to make sure it's ready for you to upload it smoothly. Export settings will affect how big the file is. If it ever seems to take too long when you're trying to upload a video to the internet, it could be an issue with the way you exported your video. So we have a project already edited in my timeline, and we're happy with it, so let's export. There's a blue button in the top and center of the screen that says Export. I'll click that. So there's five buttons up here for exporting. We have Local to export to your PC, and Device to export your video for a certain device like an iPhone or an Xbox. In the YouTube section, you can upload your video directly to YouTube and adjust all the settings for your upload here. On the Vimeo tab, you can do the same, but for Vimeo. The last tab is the DVD tab, and here you can easily burn your video onto a disc and choose the label and setting of it. Let's use the local tab for now. On the left of the window, there's plenty of different formats to choose from. A great option in my opinion is MP4 because it's pretty common and can usually be viewed on both Mac and Windows. Let's click the settings button right next to resolution here. You can choose the quality here, but the higher the quality you choose, the bigger your file will be, so it might take longer to render and upload online. I'll leave mine at better for now. Encoding can be tricky because there's lots of different ways to do it. H.264 is universal and also works on Windows and Mac. And it doesn't hurt the quality of your video so much like some other formats might. You can choose your resolution here, depending on what resolution you shot in. As a reminder, the image you see is made out of tiny pixels that display our image measured by how wide and tall they are. If you have 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels tall, then you have a full HD image. You can export in 4K, or any other resolution you may have shot in. 4K would be four times the amount of pixels that 1920 by 1080 has, but I'm going to leave it on 1920 by 1080. That's the quality for most videos on the internet, and not everyone has a 4K display to even view a 4K video on. Frame rate also depends what you shot with. When you watch a video, you're not seeing actual motion, you're seeing a ton of images or frames being placed on screen at a certain rate. We see these images as a moving image, so your frame rate is the rate you view each image. The frame rate for most films is 24 frames per second. This frame rate should give you a cinematic look if you're shooting with a camera, but if you're shooting on an iPhone or Android default camera, you'll probably have your footage at 30 frames per second. The bitrate will change due to the quality preset we chose at the top of the screen, so we're going to leave it alone at 8000 kilobits per second. Usually, the higher the frame rate and resolution, the higher the bitrate you'll want. For audio, the only thing you might want to change here is the channel setting. If you're wanting to export for surround sound, you would want to use 5.1. But for a normal video, it will most likely be fine at stereo. Once we click OK, we can choose where to save our video and what to name it. 
As we export, we can pause, cancel, and choose what we want done after the export is finished in this drop down menu here. Exporting can take a while depending on how long your video is and how high resolution it is. Make sure if you're on a laptop that you have it plugged in before you get up and leave. I recommend always watching through your video to make sure everything was edited and exported correctly before you show anyone the video or upload it. Thanks for watching! Check out our other tutorials to learn how to edit a video from start to finish on Filmora 9.